And welcome to another edition of RPG Reviews. In this edition, I'm going to review the 5th edition of the Dungeons & Dragons Monster Manual. This one I've been looking forward to do for some time, and I think others have as well. So, let's get to it, shall we? First of all, let me say that this is really a beautiful reference work. Like the Player's Handbook released last month, this book is well crafted, and at 352 pages, it's quite weighty. The cover art certainly evokes the requisite mayhem of whatever vile monstrosities that are to be found within, a beholder being one of those creatures that can make even the most experienced parties require a change of undergarments. As in the player's handbook, the credits page contains a disclaimer, which is nothing short of hilarious and reads, Disclaimer, any similarities between monsters depicted in this book and monsters that actually exist are purely coincidental. That goes double for Mind Flayers, which absolutely, utterly, and completely do not exist. Nor do they secretly run the D&D team. Do we really need a disclaimer to tell you that? You shouldn't use your brain to consider such irrational thoughts. They only make the mind cluttered, confused, and unpleasantly chewy. A good brain is nice, tender, and barely used. Go ahead, put down this book, and watch some reality TV or internet cat videos. They're really funny these days. You won't regret it. We say this only because we love you and your juicy, succulent gamer brain. (laughs) I can't wait to see what they write for the Dungeon Master's Guide disclaimer. When you get to the table of contents, you can see that the list of creatures is quite extensive. All the requisite creatures are there. Goblins, orcs, beholders, demons, and devils, dragons, vampires, and of course, the vile carrion crawler, the bane, a first level dungeon crawl since the beginning, and and on and on. As one pages through the book, you simply cannot deny this is just visually stunning. This is truly a bestiary of epic proportions. Some of the renditions of old favorites really got my imagination flowing, and that's before I even got to the content. I know what you're saying. Okay, so... It's pretty, but what's the content like? Well, the first section is an explanation of the layout of the manual itself. What do the stat blocks mean? And there is some explanation of how they arrived at the various numbers, but not completely. Furthermore, whatever alchemy Wizards of the Coast is using to determine a creature's challenge rating is not revealed here. However, it is shown that a creature's proficiency is arrived at by their challenge rating, and an experience point chart by challenge rating is included. A nice surprise and rule additions is the introduction of legendary creature actions. Here, certain powerful creatures such as beholders, dragons, demons, and certain powerful undead like vampires can actually have additional peculiar actions in their lair. Like a beholder can have a giant eye appear on a wall and fire an eye way through it. What? Oh, hell no! A legendary monster can even alter the environment around its lair, blocking out the sunshine and enshrouding the landscape in perpetual darkness. A look through the various lair actions provided certainly will inspire DMs with their own ideas, and there are a few evil chuckles to be had by reading through these as well. Now, for the monster descriptions themselves, this is really one of my favorite monster manuals for just that thing. In the olden days of Dragon Magazine, right up through its cease of publication, Dragon ran a series of ecology articles, which with vivid descriptions and background on the life cycles of various monsters in the game. Many of the write-ups herein remind me of those wonderful articles. Not all creatures get the full treatment, but some iconic monsters like orcs, dragons, demons, and devils get two or three pages of description before you even get to the first stat block. Obviously, this can help a DM run a creature easier, but it's just fascinating reading 
making this monster manual more than just an encyclopedia of beast, but a true bestiary. The stat blocks are presented in an easy to read and digest format that lays it all out for the DM to run quickly and easily. This is both a boon and a bit of a nit for me. While this format is quite good, I'm not one to constantly be paging through the manual for creatures I'm currently running. That's rather inconvenient when you are running a variety of different creature types during one encounter, say a hobgoblin chief, a war dog, and a bunch of goblins. This stat layout does not lend itself to quick and easy pen and paper transfer to your notebook as in days of yore. So far, I've simply been making stat block snapshots so I can have multiple picture windows open at on my laptop to refer to them easily. It's quick and dirty and requires a laptop at the table, but I'm already using my laptop to run initiative anyway, so for me, it's no big deal. Others might not feel the same way. The other nit that I have is that the method for a DM to create their own unique creatures is not included here either, though hopefully this will be included in the as of yet unreleased Dungeon Master's Guide. I say hopefully, because Sun's information was not included in the initial release of the third edition of the game. It was actually included in Monster Manual 2. So there, there is some cause for concern. There are three very useful appendices. One is a list of miscellaneous creatures in a more traditional format with stat blocks and an occasional picture. Included are stats for real-world animals like horses, dogs, lizards, panthers, and such, as well as some fantastic creatures like a two-headed death dog and giant everything, giant bats, giant centipedes, giant fire beetles, and so on for eight pages. Also, it's nice to see swarm monsters are included again, like a swarm of poisonous snakes, a swarm of insects, and a swarm of rats. <laughs> I hate rats. Uh, the second appendix is a list of useful NPCs, like things from berserkers to archmages. These are very bare bones with non-magical equipment and such, but great for when PCs go off the rails into the uncharted territory, or when you need a spur of the moment NPC. Something that is very likely to happen with any group, and it's nice to see that aspect of the game given some attention here. Lastly, there's a comprehensive index of stat blocks. Handy, but even more handy, would have been an index by challenge rating. And a volume of beasts this large, this kind of chart was really needed, and I'm sorry to say that it's not included. Overall, I will have to say this monster manual is a win. Hundreds of monsters elegantly presented in an easy-to-digest format, along with interesting ecologies and imagination-inducing artwork. It is, is it the best monster manual ever? That's hard to say, as each of us has our own preferences, but it's one of the best. Well, that about wraps up this review of the new D&D Monster Manual. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will review the Dungeon Master's Guide as well when it's released. And by that time, I should have enough playing sessions on both sides of the screen to give a review of the entire game. So please watch for that. If you enjoyed this video, please check my others, including my series on retro editions of Dungeons & Dragons and old modules, and subscribe so you'll be n notified of new releases. Coming up, I have a review of Digital Tools for D&D, as well as a few discussion topics, such as alignments and so forth, as well as other retro module reviews. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, my friends, may your D20 roll true, and game on. <laughs>